Hello everyone and welcome to my Magicka Sorcerer PvP build for the Old Schools Online Refstone patch. This is a very nice high DPS Magicka Sorcerer PvP build that is useful in Battlegrounds, CP campaigns and non-CP campaigns. Basically the CP just builds further on this build and makes your shields, damage etc much stronger in CP. But the build is pretty much very efficient and optimized for non-CP as well. And honestly, I really love this build because it has some good, really good sustain, but also some very high DPS. And that is what I really like about it. It's also really easy to get used to. It's not um, a pet meta sorcerer. Ultimate gain is good on it. So let's just dive right into it. What we are using, what sets, etc. So with the gear setup, I always like to use the website as it's just a bit more clear on what I am using and what traits I have on it. So gear setup, monster sets, pirate skeleton or bloodspawn. I like either of these. Bloodspawn has the advantage that it will like also proc when you are shielding because you take damage and it can proc. Pirate skeleton um, doesn't really proc when your shields up and when they hit your shields only when they hit like your health bar when there is actually health going away. But it can make you extremely tanky. Apart from that we are using pipe shackle breaker. Shackle breaker is pretty much a must okay shackle breaker is definitely recommended and we use five bright throat you can also choose to replace bright throats with Re wizard's reposter or spell strategist but again i really recommend to at least stick with shackle breaker because shackle breaker will give you very nice increased max magicka and stamina and the stamina recovery and magicka recovery is very nice i also tell you here what traits i am using a jewelry three times okay and three times a Increase spell damage, traits, impenetrable, all armor pieces, enchantments, tricep glyphs on the big pieces, of course, chest, helmets, legs, max magic on the smaller ones, armor setup, five light, one heavy, one medium. Best armor rating you get by going for a heavy chest and medium legs. On a weapon wall, we have a destruction flame staff infused with the shock damage enchantment, and a restoration staff I have infused or defending with the increased spell damage. If you want to be more offensive, I would go with the infused myself. Attributes etc. 64 points in Magicka. Boon the Apprentice. You can also go for the Atronic. It's kind of up to you. I personally like to go with the Apprentice. Drink Witch Mother Spot and Brew. Especially when you go Bright's Road, you need to use Witch Mother Spot and Brew. Weapon Bar. Destruction Staff. First ability is Force Pull. Force pulls the first ability that you can get from the destruction step. Secondly, crystal fragments, first ability from dark magic, hardened wards. Fourth ability, daedric summoning, that is your shield. Mage's wrath, execute, first ability from storm calling, streak, last ability from storm calling, ultimate de destruction or meteor, soul assault. You can run any of these really. It's really up is, is up to you. Personally, I sometimes like to use my Restore, especially against like Nile Blades, or to deal a lot of pressure while keeping that ultimate up. But of course, Destro ultimate is quite expensive. Restoration. Number one, Healing Ward. The fourth ability from the Restoration Staff, Boundless Storm. Second ability, Storm Calling Line. Dark Conversion. Dark Conversion is what we use to convert Stamina into Magicka, and that is why Shackle Breaker is so great. Because the extra stamina, you can always use Dark Conversion to change your stamina into Magicka. Fourth ability from the Dark Magic. Power Surge, important for the increased Major Prophecy. Increased 20% spell damage. Fourth ability from Storm Calling. Haunting Curse, second ability, Daedric Summoning. And the ultimate Light Champion, which is the morph of the Restoration Ultimate. Vampire or Werewolf. Now, you don't want to go Werewolf because you are not a Magicka character, so you're not really going to use that. So, Vampire. Vampire is optional. I'm currently ac actually running Vampirism myself for the increased recovery. but And I stay in stage 4 Vampirism. And then you, of course, have to unlock all passes except Savage Feeding. And maybe like to Vampire Bite, but that's really up to you. Recommended races. Now, the recommended races, like, if you really want to go for DPS, very high damage, you can go with a high elf. High elf is very powerful. The stamina recovery you will get from the race passes you can use for dark exchange 
It's just like in pressured situations, I had a hard time using dark conversion. Like you cannot always use dark conversion. If someone is constantly interrupting you or you are in a one versus three, it can be a bit hard to get a dark conversion. So I'm currently myself Emma Breton, uh, but another really interesting race actually is the North. Now you might be thinking, the North, wait, what? That is a stamina race. I will probably make a separate video on this, why I think this. But the North increased physical and spell resistance is very good. The Breton has increased spell resistance. But in non-CP or battlegrounds, you just don't get the physical resistance. Whereas with the North, you actually do. You do lose a little bit of Magicka and a little bit of recovery, but you just become so much more tanky with it. Especially if you go north with three times protective trades on your jewelry, that is like a 9.4k increase in physical and spell resistance by jewelry and race alone. I'm not even talking about all the buffs, etc. you can get. So for the rotation, I got the rotation listed here, but in the end, I will also make a video on it and I will go over it. Champion points, the champion points, we have the Steed, 5 Spell Shield, 40 Resistance, 20 Ironclad, the Lady, 5 Fixed Skin, 32 Elemental Defender, 32 Hardy, 47 Light Armor Focus. The Light Armor Focus is because we are a Breton, so we already get the Spell Resistance. If you are not a Breton, spread the points between Light Armor Focus and Spell Shield equally, so you get a bit the same amount of Physical and Spell Resistance. The tower, 19 in Sivener, 6 in Sprinter, 20 in Warlord. Oh, and the Lord, 81 Bastion and 8 Expert Defender. 19 in Mooncalf, 100 Arcanist, 56 Tenacity. Shadow, 34 Tumbling, 16 Shadow Ward. The Apprentice, 64 Elemental Expert, 46 in Spell Erosion, 34 in Elfborn, 4 in Blessed. And the Atronic, 56 Shattering Blows, 39 Stab Expert. And last but not least, the Ritual. 18 Tomaturge, 9 Precise Strikes. So, of course, we're going to cover the rotation as well. Again, I got a little bit of a written version here for the rotation, but I will also show you the video. So, let's go over the build rotation. As always, there are certain buffs with a build that you have to keep up. And in this case, with this build, it is the Boundless Storm and the Power Surge. Those are two things you want to keep up at all time. Why? Because Power Surge grants us major sorcery, increasing our weapon damage and spell damage by 20%. And while active, dealing a critical strike heals you for 2.6k health every 1 second. Well, it can never happen every 1 second. So Power Surge, very important for the increased spell damage and the healing that we get for critical strikes. And then Boundless Storm. Now Boundless Storm is very important because, first of all, you can get a little bit of movement speed when you activate it for the first four seconds. But more importantly is the major resolve and major reward. Increasing your physical resistance and spell resistance by 5.3k. So that's very important. That is a huge resistance increase. So you want to keep that up at all times as well. Dark Conversion is something we use when we get low on Magicka. But we have plenty of stamina. Haunted Curse is a nice overtime damage effect. And Haunted Curse is very nice because it has a timer. Which allows you to like combine an attack and time an attack combined with haunting curse healing ward is nice for when you are low health and you need to get your health back or heal an ally force pulse is our main spammable crystal fragments one the proc that is our main dps hardened ward is our main shield mage's ref is our execute and streak is our movement and also our stun because crystal fragments doesn't stun anymore so we use streak which is offensive and we can streak over enemy players and stun them. It's also very nice to get Night Blades out of Cloak. And then the ultimate again, Eye of the Flame. Um, you can go for Meteor or Soul Assault, really up to you. So how do you start? Well, very simple. First of all, Boundless Storm and Power Surge. Like I said, I always like myself to open with a Light Attack and a Haunted Curse. Light Attack, Haunted Curse. After that, I, I overall shield and use Force Pills. It depends how many enemies there are, of course. If there are a lot of enemies, I start with the shield first. What you do then is light attack, force pulse. Light attack, force pulse. Light attack, force pulse. Like this. Um, if needed, light attack and haunting curse again. Recast. 
the abilities that need to be recast so boundless storm power surge and haunting curse those are the abilities that you have to recast apart from that you have this rotation light attack force pulls and now the moment a crystal fragment procs you're gonna pop in a major cancer like taps so here you see maybe get your shield up again and major cancel the crystal fragment targets is getting low okay light attack execute keep the pressure up and try to get him to 20 percent if you execute procs overall it will do a lot of damage and kill your target not all times though if it doesn't quickly recast the execute keep your buffs up and just keep the pressure up like that now if you get low on magicka use your dark conversion you can spam it a couple of times if you want make sure you don't get bashed because the dark conversion is actually bad ball so in case you are having a melee opponent what is really nice to do is you're gonna streak over them maybe shoot up you take some distance and you can use your dark conversion because by the time he comes back to you you already are done with the dark conversion if you are higher if you are already have your shoots up maybe even cash your shoots before streaking so shoots streak weapon swap dark conversion boom you have your magicka so that is something very nice you can do as well make sure to also do light attacks with the back bar especially if you like me run an increase weapon damage enchantment it's very important to do that and apart from that yeah like i said just keep the boss up the haunting curse keep the rotation up keep the pressure up maybe weapon swap reapply haunting curse if needed and there you go target low place the executes and just like that you can keep the pressure up if you're very low health and you are solo use a healing ward if you are low health but you are in a group situation i overall prefer to use my hardened ward first because healing ward is sometimes unreliable because you can maybe be 25 percent health you have an ally with 22 percent health so you use healing ward thinking you're getting that healing ward but actually it goes to your ally and then you get executed so that is the reason why i prefer to go hard and ward healing ward in a group situation but in a solo situation healing ward low health is much stronger as the shield will be increased in strength based on the amount of health missing and that is pretty much it apart from that we got everything else covered if you want to check out more pvp builds guys etc check out the website learneso.net i will definitely link to magicka sorcerer build 28th of march will be the nda lift of elsewhere um, i actually played plate elsewhere i also got some footage i'm currently editing this so if you're curious about elsewhere about the necromancers the ability housing anything with it elsewhere the dragons definitely make sure to subscribe because 28th of march i will be releasing a lot of videos including all the skills of the necromancer all the morphs and all the animations of it as well i wish you all a great day and i see you in terminal bye bye i'm out